going in. Oh, look at all this natural light. Yeah, this is the most natural light I've painted in in my life. Uh, I started painting a lot in, at El Rancho and Social, and my window was like this big, and like that, I don't know, probably 10 feet wide. And then I moved into here, and I like realized what painting with natural light can really do. It's like amazing. Um, my paintings have gotten better, I think, just because of that. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is the studio, got all the paints sorted out. I use a lot of color, so I have to, I have to keep them separated just to make it easier for me to sort through whenever I'm painting. Because I usually paint pretty fast, so it's easier for my brain to be like, oh, you know. And one of the things I love about your work is the materials that you use in addition to the paint, such as the glitter and the gold leaf, and even just using like your everyday materials in a way to collage. Yeah, uh, yeah, most of those things are pretty cheap sometimes. Um, and then it's also about making people question the material. Like, if I can make them be like, is that glitter? And then, like, did he really put glitter on this painting? Like, that's, I get that a lot, which I love just because, it, again, it's like, paint that's what art is about like making people feel a certain way whatever that feeling might be like i don't have control over that but i have a control over just like making them feel something so um but yeah i love kind of a, and it also allows me to experiment in the studio which helps me stay in the studio longer like if i have i can be in the studio way longer if i'm working with 20 20 different materials rather than just five um so I guess the idea is to expand your bag of tools in order to work longer, which I enjoy working a lot, so it's fun. And then I also uh, hand press my own paper uh, using old pieces of paper and dryer lint. And I put it like in a big tub and like mush it down and create this like mush and then pour it in a blender with like some water and blend it up and then pour that onto a screen and press that and then I get this pretty cool paper. Uh, and you can add like paint to it and it kind of comes out different colors. And it comes out, it's like really, it has like this beautiful smooth texture to it. But then if you look in the cracks, there's like this other great texture. It's like smooth, but not smooth. It's great. Um, yeah. And then, this is more of a series from me. This is a, a photo from, uh, I think we're right outside of Austin. There was like this nice cactus. And yeah. And so, this is like another photo of some water lilies I did. But yeah. Um, Do you feel like your artwork has leaned more to like this organic material and these flowers since you moved your studio to Third Ward? Do you feel like it's been more like influenced by your yard since you've been at home more? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, for sure. I guess like you have to find inspiration like wherever it might be, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're able to find it in the backyard, then why not, you know? So for sure, like I think going from living in a... I lived in that warehouse for like three years and it was so industrial, you know, like so industrial. And then I get to come here and there's like all this natural light and then I get to walk in my backyard, like literally walk out of this backyard door into this garden that I've been working on. And so it's just been, yeah, for sure. And I guess like I wanted, nature has always been in my work, but now it's just like all over it. And then I guess also getting like encouragement from people I think this has probably been my most well-received series. People really like the work. And it just like encourages me to be more experimental. Cause this was like, it was hard for me to like figure out what I wanted to do. And then if, would people, would people be really into me painting over photos? Like, what, how would people think about that? And so after I kind of talked it over with, um, man, my mentor who just passed Richard Stout, he talked to me about if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use digital art like that, then like I should add like my own touch to it. 
and then so what I would do what I do is I uh, sorry I'm getting like emotional about here no I appreciate it so what I do is I paint on top of it first um, and then take a photo of that painting and then reprint it out and then try to repeat that process as many times as I can um, and then after doing that process until I'm satisfied and then I do hand embellishments over that painting that I've printed out over and over again. Mm -hmm. You have this beautiful space. Do you feel that having all of this natural light and having a home studio has helped you thrive through COVID? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think I learned that living at El Rincon, like being able to, uh, <coughs> I slept on the couch for like, uh, almost two years. I had slept on a couch for like two years just to wake up, to be able to paint, just to go back to sleep. But I think knowing or learning that, teaching myself that process like has made my productivity like triple here because I have like a, it's like a comfortable space for me to like relax in and then I'm able to come back in this space and like work hard and then go upstairs and like go to sleep in a nice bed and then so the comfort level, um, after not having a comfort level, I guess you could say for so long, like getting one has only made me more productive and it's allowed me to like be relaxed and think about better ideas or come up with better ideas, I guess you would say. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely helped out a lot. Do you take your pictures of the flowers and organic material with the painting in mind? Or do you take lots of pictures and then find inspiration as you look at what you've captured? Yeah, so um, what I've been doing is um, it's been, I've been printing out the same photo only up to 10 times. So each print is different because it's hand embellished, right? Each print I print out ends up getting hand embellished. And so each time I look at this like photo of flowers, I feel like a different way. So I get to express that feeling in a different way each time. Well, I'm allowed, I guess I, I'm like allowed to because I do it that, that process. Mm. Um, so that way, yeah, so that way it's like each, even though it's the same flower, the expression is different. And so I guess that's like the, con the concept behind the work is that everyone looks at the same flower but kind of feels a different way. And so eventually what I want to do is I want to show all of the prints together so everyone sees it's the same flower, but gets their own different type of express. You know, get, everyone gets their everyone gets to choose their own expression of that that flower. So it's like, I guess it's like my salute to like Andy Warhol, you know, because like what he did with the portraits is kind of the same way. So like even though it was like the same photo of Marilyn Monroe, like you got your own flavor of Marilyn Monroe because there were so many of you know. She had different skin pigment and different lips and different eyes and different hair color and et cetera, et cetera. So, so I guess that's like what I'm trying to do with my prints is that even though it's the same print, you get your own, you get to feel like your own way about the same flower. Just how like how in everyday life, you know, everyone, everyone felt about Marilyn Monroe a certain way. And so you got to express that by having your own, Andy, Andy allowed you to express that with being able to find Roe Mill and Roe within that series. So this is a series, uh, a painting from a series that I started uh, inspired by Claude Monet's uh, Water Lily series, which he did, he was doing like during World War One and then post-World War I, um, he created like the giant water lilies for the French citizens. And, um, and so I get, I'm working on a show, well I was working on a show, for the Dodery Art Center in Austin, but they just canceled the show because of COVID. But yeah, so the idea was that I would have the largest room at the Dodery Art Center, and I would just do these like really large flower paintings, um, mainly because I was, again, I was inspired by Claude Monet, and he made the water lilies for the French citizens post World War I, mainly because they didn't have a peaceful place to go to. And so the French government created this like huge museum for just the water lily series. Um, and so that's kind of like what I wanted to do for the citizens of Austin. And I guess people that would go there from Texas. Uh, so I decided to do 
a number of large landscape paintings um, and then create like a meditative place for them to go and look at the paintings because the the Dory Art Center was only gonna allow like I think six people in at one time so it would like allow for this like intimate setting to already be set for these people to get lost in like flower paintings mainly because if you know if they it was like a like an alternative to going to nature you know if they were afraid are not afraid, but they just wanted to be cautious about getting COVID and not wanting to go to Barton Springs or whatever it is, but wanted to see nature. Like I wanted to give them that opportunity. Do you find that you have been really inspired to create more images that include nature with this idea that you've mentioned that people can't really go out as much as we'd like? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that was that was kind of like the start of the small flowers, you know. Uh, just because I was like, they were all studies, you know. Like what what can I do to these flowers to make them not more interesting, but like my my flowers. Uh, and so it was just like me playing around with printouts that I would do of my backyard, and then it like led to larger paintings just because I like to paint large already. Um, and so. And then um, I got the idea because I already had a show at the Dotary Plan. And the show that I had at the Dotary was like pretty good, but I wanted to scrap that idea and like take this inspiration from Claude Monet and make a room just full of flowers for people to look at. Um, Because again, just because it's like, everything is so high tension. Everything is so high tension right now with the race stuff and COVID and being secluded and there's all this angst going around. And so I wanted to provide a space for people to feel less anxious. And so they'd be able to stare at abstract expressionist versions of flowers. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey JJ, can you show us a bit about the accessories and clothing you've been working on? Yeah. Um, These are some shorts that I grabbed from Target. just like some jersey knit material and uh, I like been drawing on painting a little bit and then drawing on top of it um, and then using like an iron to seal the drawing itself onto the garment um, which has been a lot of fun because it allows me to still be a painter on the garment itself Um, and then I've also been working on a lot of like patchwork which has been printed from my HP design jet. But yeah, uh, yeah, working on patchwork and jackets, for jackets, still drawing on it though. Um, yeah, so, and then also been making these sweaters even though it's like super hot in Houston all the time. <laughs> I enjoy drawing on the sweaters just because it's, there's so much material, you know? And they really, again, uh, since I found out that I'm able to like steam in the ink into the the material, it's been really fun to be able to have like this new medium to draw on. Um, then I'm working on a line of accessories, and the first item we're gonna launch is a oversized tote bag, which is also gonna be like a weekender bag. Um, like if you're going on a weekend trip, you throw in like a pair of shoes, some clothes, whatever, or you can also use it to be a recycled grocery bag. Um, I wanted to make it a really big grocery bag because all the ones that I usually see are pretty small. You can fit like 10 groceries in, but I wanted to make it so you could fit 20 groceries in and then um, the oversized strap allows it to like sit comfortably on the body once it has all the groceries in it. Um, Then this is another bag that we're going to launch, which is a small laptop bag or purse bag or, you know, just go to the beach bag. Um, but yeah, the idea is that uh, I give the material to the seamstress and they are allowed to kind of express themselves with the fabrics and stuff that I give them. Um, there's only a few specifics that I want to keep uh, for the bag itself, but usually I kind of let them do whatever it is they want with the bag. So it allows them, gives them creative freedom in like a new sense. Uh, but yeah, so that's like the fabric, are the bags and accessories and clothing I'm working on right now. 
And are the patterns that are on your garments and your bags, that's your artwork, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the the bags, um, they like the flower stuff, from, the flower images from the bags are actually from my garden. And so during the COVID shutdown, the only place we could really go was our your own house. So I decided to take photo fla uh, fla flower, excuse me, photos of flowers to um, make new patterns from and so I've been able to print out the fabric uh, straight from my printer. Oh, excuse me. Straight from my printer, which has been pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, so the work, the work is my original work, yes. The painting I'm currently working on is for a show that I have coming up uh, at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center in September. Yeah, um, they asked me to make a, a, a body of work that was like really big paintings because I did a show with them last September and I showed like, um, I think it was like 13 feet by seven feet. And they really liked that and asked if I had more. And I said, uh, I kind of did at the time, but I said confidently, yes. <laughs> I don't think I did. But yeah, and so I've been working on a number of works for them um, that are like in large scale. This is like the first show I've ever had where it's really large paintings, which has been fun to make large works because there's more material to work with as usual. But yeah, so they asked me to do from the same series that I've been working on, which is uh, African Contemporary, which is me highlighting my favorite African sculptures. Um, and then I do like the paint over, which I've been doing with the flower series too. Um, so this series is like the first series I started with painting over the photo itself. And then I moved on to the flowers soon after. Um, but yeah, so the, the sculptures are like all my favorite sculptures in African artifacts or like, I guess, ancient African art, you could say. Um, and so the titles of the sculpt, the titles of the paintings themselves are, are the name of the sculpture and the tribe and the country that they came from. So that way, whenever the viewer looks at the title, they can Google the title and then find that sculpture via Google images and then find out more about that sculpture itself and like what it meant to those people. Well, that's a really great process. Yeah, yeah. Because it totally inspires inquiry and for people to deep dive like further. Right, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's like, I didn't want to be considered a, a cultural appropriator, you know, even though I'm black, like I'm not African. And so I wanted it to let people know like this is what inspired me to do this, you know? And yeah. so if it inspires me to do this, then maybe it'll inspire you to not only look into African art, but then look into your own heritage and look at the type of art that your people made. Because uh, it's important to know like all that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You find out a lot about yourself. So yeah, so this is from that series. But yeah, and so, uh, yeah, so I worked on, I made, a, I made seven, like nine foot tall by I guess this is seven feet wide by, I think, 13 feet or something like that. Anyways, I, I made a, a number of series of large paintings from that series, which I hope is like more impactful, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe because like whenever I made the smaller paintings like this, you could tell it was a sculpture, but you had to like really look closely, you know? But because the, the image is so much bigger now, like I think people will understand the, the concept more. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Really interested to know, um, you know, what your thoughts are in continuing your practice during COVID. Mm, gonna keep my head in the studio, gonna keep producing. I have a lot of things coming up, shows, and then commissions that I need to finish. So it's just pretty much just gonna keep working. That's awesome. And so 
having had the pleasure of watching you emerge over the last several years and seeing your artwork grow across both discipline and content, is there anything you would like to share for any emerging artists? I just think your work is so unique and you're such a great person. Mm. It'd be great to hear if you had any just feedback to young artists or artists in general also trying to thrive during this time. Uh, man, I guess I'll leave you with my favorite quote about making art, which is, it's an Andy Warhol quote. He said, um, make art and then let other people decide whether it's good or not. And while they're deciding, make even more art. Yes. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.